I'm sure that you could hear all of those bathroom noises. I will make sure I find a way to put that in. I'm rolling. Good? All right, I'd really uh, appreciate it if uh, you could kind of walk me through your main uh, goals. My goals? Yeah. I, I can't remember if it was actually you who I, who I said this with. I was joking with somebody saying, if I'm not like a 5'5 five five within a week, then, <laughs> then, then this, is, this is a failed venture. So 5'5 five five, NTRP. <laughs> and let's just make it spicy. Let's go in two hours. <laughs> is that it or do you, do you have more? <laughs> well, that should be pretty simple, right? I mean, it's just yeah. like balls to the wall and then, you know. I say uh, low to high a few times. And... Yes, exactly, low to high. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. what I always keep forgetting. Uh, it, that's, it's just so simple. We'll do some like Spanish drill where you run back and forth and you'll be a 5-5. Five five. What the? <laughs> we just had a really cool session where we were just talking to, through some things. He was asking me about my mentality, about my goals and uh, I felt like I was able to put a lot of things in perspective, which I think is something that he puts a lot of emphasis on, um, and I think that's great. And I already feel like, like if I left right now, I already would have gotten a lot of out of this. So we haven't even hit a single tennis ball yet, and I'm really excited for that as well. And I hope you enjoy. Yeah, the trip was a lot of fun. It reminded me of college. Oh yeah? Uh, tennis, just traveling with the team and screwing around between matches. <laughs> nice. Cheering, you know, cheering for your teammates. Yeah, yeah, that, that's an experience I really want to have at some point. Yeah, it's great. That's the main thing. Sorry, good. The last time you hit with a lefty? Um, I, definitely more than a year ago, I think. Really? <laughs> yep. <laughs> nice. Let me know when you're ready to back up. Oh dear. Two more. Uh, sorry. It's fine. Last one. Yeah. All right, let's go back and rally down the middle for a bit. Okay. Here it is. Any one week of heart. Look away. Oh yeah, my bad. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh dear. Oh, 
Darn it. Here you go. My bad. No worries. Woo! Yeah. Here you go. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm Shoot. gonna set up the ball machine real quick. All right. Yeah, already. I'm getting a bit hard on myself. Starting to think about all those forehands. I was stiff, wishing that I could figure out just how to do it right. It just looks so simple when people who know how to do it, do it. But I'm one of the stiffest people I've ever seen. You know, I mean, you can tell immediately. I just sort of connect muscles in my body that shouldn't be connected at all times. And so everything kind of moves together in this really rigid clump. My goal mainly <laughs> is working on mindset. Okay. I think that is where all of my, most of my flaws are inherent is, and where I am struggling the most and yeah. where a lot of my other flaws are rooted from. So honestly, like I, when it comes to goals, I don't have a very clear idea, especially because um, my tennis experience so far has just been set play. And um, I've been really, really grateful to the person that uh, you've seen on my channel so far, Z, because um, he's the one person who's like right next to me where I live and he's always wanting to play as often as I do. Nice. Um, and he prefers set play. And so See I've got- See the dude I've, with like the bandana? Yeah. Uh, the, yeah. Yeah, and so I've gotten so much experience with set play, but um, as a result, I think in the last three years since I started playing, um, when it comes to uh, framing this sort of thing and coming up with things I need to work on and um, identifying my problems and how to work them out and um, just sort of the first step to take, uh, let alone um, a more extended goal, mm -hmm. I am a bit lost. Let's talk like five, like five years. I see. So five year, this is another, this is another thing that um, has been thrown up in the air a little bit in the last year or so when I started to plateau and started to um, lose the honeymoon period. Um, when did you start again? Like at really taking it seriously? April 2018 was when I first bought my okay. uh, Walmart adult racket and hit my first serves. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and have you received any instructions since then? Or is it Yeah, all... here and there. Um, okay. n none, just, um, it's just private lessons here and there and some drills at uh, the club that I work at. Okay. Um, which has all been very useful, but it's still been very, you know, occasional and um, I haven't had mm -hmm. regimented training or anything. Sure. Um, five year goals. So, tennis for me, um, I see as more than just something I want to play. So, um, when I think about tennis uh, and what draws me to the sport overall, mm -hmm. um, it's sort of like the general appeal of not only it as a sport, but as sort of like an art form and, a, and expression. And that's um, the thing about tennis that for, for me has a lot of parallels to the acrobatics thing that I do, which is called tricking. Yeah, the, so, the technique of it, the artistry of it, the, like the enjoyment of it. Yeah, and, and also when it comes to um, the professional scenes, um, the, the storytelling and, um, and I, that's sort of an odd way to look at it when it comes to people's lives, but that's also another element is it's just, um, you know, the people who are trying to make a living and um, their stories and um, that very unique and very brutal um, landscape that they're, that they're living in. Um, mm -hmm. So I have been working on a tennis web comic. It's been, um, nice. I haven't work, been working on it as much the last six months or so, but um, the first arc uh, is totally planned out. So five years from now, I would love to have some of my web comic published. Nice. All right, Sergio, we're just gonna start with an easy ball right down the middle. All right. And I'd love for you to just alternate between forehand and backhand. 
Okay. You can aim wherever you want, it doesn't matter. Just kind of get situated, get used to the, the feed. All right, ready? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. When you say yeah, what do you, uh, what does that mean? I, I'm, I'm immediately recognizing when something felt incredibly off. Yeah. And so I was like, oh yes, yes, that was a, I'm not surprised that that did not go in the court. <laughs> okay. It's just a bad habit at this point. So the uh, more than playing a sport, so is that uh, in terms of goals, where, where are you in relationship to that goal now? Okay. Are you already there and you want to maintain it? Or are right. you aspiring to get to that point and you don't feel like you're there right now? I mean, when it comes to just like this physical goal here, I'm not there yet. Yeah, um, I mean the, the more than playing a sport uh, yeah. attitude. I'm actually farther away than I was when I started. And, and, and like that, okay. that's, that's part of what the, the burnout uh -huh. in the last six months and um, like the disenfranchisement in a way. Uh -huh. It's not really like something that I'll probably get back because life is so, um, it's so much of a journey that of, you know, it's a spectrum of so many different places that you're going to be emotionally and mentally and um, just in general. But um, when it comes to that, that's probably just gonna be more of a thing that I have to ride and figure out. Um, okay. But th this, I want to learn how to manage better uh -huh. um, because that happens in all walks of life. And um, when it comes to this, which is something that I want to um, have remain um, an enjoyable experience. In five years from now, I, I want to be more sustainable with my mindset mm -hmm. in, in playing and with, um, with all of this, the creative side and the artistic side. So this is a lifelong goal, of course. Mm -hmm. I am gonna give you that same ball now but over to the, the ad side. So you're gonna hit all four hands. Okay. You'll have plenty of time to get back to the middle again. I just like to see you kind of move out and, and back again and okay. just hit four hands. Totally your, your call on tar like target doesn't really matter. I just wanna see you hit a bunch of four hands with a little bit of movement. Okay. All right. I think I'll go two cross, one down the line, two cross, one down the line. We'll go about 60 seconds. Oh, yeah. Go ahead and clear that ball for me. All right, ready? Yep. Last five balls. All right, Saria, when you come back out, <clears throat> we're gonna do that same thing, but the pace of the ball is gonna be a little bit faster. Okay. 
Trying the same thing, two cross, one down the line. Yeah. That's five shots, five shots. That was cross. Darn it. I'll go down the line again. Yeah. All right, good job. So when it comes to playing, five years from now, so a year and a half ago, I would have told you 5-0. <laughs> Strong 4-0 would be great. <laughs> You've learned something in the last year and a half, huh? <laughs> I've learned a couple of things. I've, I've felt a couple of feelings, and um, <laughs> my feeling right now is telling me that Strong 4-0 is probably a good goal for five years. Okay. Um, so talking about age, because I feel like that's an important thing when it comes to a, a sport this physical, especially with how physical I am as an acrobat and, yeah. and how my body is starting to deteriorate a little bit already, um, I'm probably going to need to be taking it more easy. And also financially uh, will probably affect whether or not I'm going to be focusing on USTA leagues or UTR leagues or any sort of leagues because right now I'm not engaged in any of those. So I don't know um, where that will land um, within the next few years. Also with schedule and everything because that, that's, that's a commitment to, to commit to a team, uh, especially if you're playing doubles. And I would like to play more doubles like because I haven't had much of that experience at all yet and okay. I really enjoy it. Uh, I, I feel like I'm actually a better doubles player right now even though I hardly ever play it. Grab a quick drink <sighs> and then we're gonna do the same thing on your backhand side. Man, I thought this would be more of a workout. We're gonna start off with the slower, easier pace and I'd like you to hit the first half of these all as topspin. Okay. And then the second, I'm gonna, the second half, I'm gonna ask you to switch over to slice. Got it. Still your choice on the target. Same thing, two cross, one down the line. All right. Oh yeah. Don't lean back. Step in. Last top spin one here. All right, I'll slice, please. Two cross, one down the line. Yeah. That's not down the line. That's okay. Loose. It's okay. Just go looser. Last three. There we go. Let's get this one down the line. There we go. All right, grab a quick drink. I love this emphasis on water. It's kind of heartwarming that the internet has sort of made it a meme to tell people to drink water. It's one of the best memes ever. <laughs> okay, so there's a couple of these I'd like to uh, drill down into uh, further. Uh, let's start with, like, what, what exactly does strong 4-0 mean to you in terms of 
the the actual nuts and bolts of what your game hopefully is gonna be. Yeah, this is actually amazing. I'm glad that you bring this up because this is so nebulous, isn't it? Uh, especially, I mean, I didn't even realize how different the ratings are between regions. And, and uh, you know, you get a lot of YouTube commenters being, uh, <laughs> pointing that out, you know? Uh, um, <laughs> so, for me, I, I guess, <sighs> ratings don't just occur um, in a vacuum and um, they don't just occur via USTA or, or um, through Resolute means. Ratings, I feel like, are also an internal thing. And um, when, I, when I was thinking Strong 4.0, I had a very like personal feeling that was sort of building up when I was thinking of that. So Strong 4.0, um, I'm thinking of having weapons in my game. Anything uh, in particular yes. that you aspire? The main one is the serve. Okay. So, and and hopefully in, in all aspects that you can think of, um, like in power slash pace, mm -hmm. spin, play slice, spin, slice, yeah, etc. Okay. Um, I feel like I, I should be able to have a dictating forehand. You feel like you're able to do that at, at your current level, like r relative to your current level with the forehand you have now, or not not necessarily. And it's so hard to tell because I usually only play one person, and he has a very specific style. Okay. Um, and there are days when I play other people, and it, it, which is very um, infrequent, that I feel like I can do this. Um, one of the biggest eye-opening experiences for me, of course, was hitting with Mark for the first time, and experiencing that <laughs> level outright for the first time. That Hit. was a huge eye-opener. Yeah. Um, and I realized that I... Is that your first time hitting with somebody that level? Um, aside from a coach who was not like playing down to my level to work with me, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, it was my first time hitting with somebody who was like trying to play at the four or five level while he was hitting with me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, and and the backhand is also important to me. It's it's it's. I feel like this is a pretty um, common sentiment, but the one-handed backhand is what made me want to start playing tennis. And. Um, uh, I'm passionate about having a good backhand, and um, and I don't necessarily feel like I should probably build my game around having a strong backhand. Like I don't want to run around my forehand. Micah Babel has already had plenty of things to say to me about doing that in the past. So um, I just want to have a um, one that's. I, I want to be very strong off of both wings. Is basically what I want. Okay. Um, and also, I feel like um, having a strong slice is an underrated element. Of, of tennis. Uh, really good slices are so, so difficult and they open up so many more options, um, sure. especially at the net. And, and oh yeah, I want to be great at the net. I, I, I really enjoy being there and uh, whenever you're able to finish at the net, it's a very satisfying feeling. So your goal uh, is to be, be an all-court player. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Although I enjoy playing defense, so I guess if I can keep my speed as an asset, then I will do it as long as possible. But mm -hmm. um, I enjoy being offensive very much. Um, and okay. I, feel, I feel like with my athleticism, I should be able to, to uh, procure that if I um, train the right way, so. Yeah, I think so. Consistency is another very broad term. And um, at, at different levels, it means something different. But when I'm thinking of where I want to be in five years, um, this is a very hard thing to try and, and, and qualify with, with words. It's, it's more of a feeling. So when it comes to consistency, I need a lot more of it if I, if I want to be at a higher level. I need so much more consistency. I'm mm -hmm. extremely inconsistent. Okay. Um, so <laughs> I just need, a, I, I, there's more I need to learn about it because it is a very um, lost concept with me. I don't, I, I haven't learned myself how to uh, maximize it. So I, I think understanding consistency more Meaning the application of it, uh, yeah, cause and effect. And also, I think consistency is probably a really mental thing. There, there are choices you can make in your game. Yeah. And also, I want to learn how to create safe topspin. That's a huge one, actually. Now that I think about it, that's that's a big one, because I really struggle when it comes to especially different types of incoming balls. Like I, I don't, I don't even know how to just sort of dink it in. Uh, when I try to, I usually miss very badly, and. If I don't, then I usually get immediately punished. Consistency is going to be a huge project. And those are the, probably the two main things. Uh, uh, actually, never mind. The, the main, main thing is mentality. Yeah. All right, we're going to do some volleys now. Nice. The pace of shot you're about to receive is going to be kind of like medium hard. Your job is going to be to alternate back and forth at first between forehand and backhand. 
So you just kind of move side to side. The machine is just going to feed the same feed. Okay. And I'd like to see you just move around and hit uh, forehand and backhand. Okay. Your, your uh, call on target. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it works. Go down the line. Yeah, that works. <laughs> yeah. I like that better though. Yeah, I was committed to doing a backhand. <laughs> Better. Yeah. All right, good job. Thanks. Now I'm going to shift it so it's only going to go to your forehand side. Okay. And we're going to do the same kind of thing where you move out, hit the volley, and then go back to the, the tape mark again. All right. That's okay. That's all right. There you go. Let's, let's hit a dropper. There we go. Another one. Regular. Last three. There we go. I need to be kinder to myself, realistic thinking, because I, I tend to um, operate in delusions um, in, in, <laughs> in many aspects of my life, especially on court when it comes to something this competitive. Yeah. Um, like it, it comes, it comes also down to being kind to myself. But my, um, I feel like the universe is out to get me. Overthinking is one of the things that I'm best at in my life. Not letting other people in so much, especially people who don't have my best interest in mind. But this is this a lot of these again are very much, you know, whole life things and, and that's part of why yeah. I find tennis appealing. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Um, not only just because it's a, a good sport for doing that, um, but because me personally I found that it's uh, I, I think that when I am able to um, develop these tools and maintain them and um, learn with them that my the rest of my life is going to be something that I can uh, prosper from as a result. Same thing, but now backhand side. Yeah, too much. You don't need a huge backswing. Yeah. You don't need a huge too much of anything. Dropper. No, not really. That's harder. Ah, that's harder. <laughs> Last three. Ian is a crafty one. He's crafty. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good job. Grab a quick drink, and then we'll do a couple overheads. All right. You can start like a step or two inside the service line. All right. And you'll probably have to move back about two or three steps Got or it. so. But it, it's not going to be super, super deep. Go that way this time. That's okay. Bombs away. <laughs> 
Yeah, Last two. To... Just hitting overhead. Oh. No! Uh, it's just right. That was the last ball. <sighs> All right, grab a quick drink and then we'll, we'll hit some serves. All right. You told me that you're in a lower place now than you were a year and a half ago. Okay. Why is that? And how, how did that happen? And practically speaking, what, like what, how does that manifest? Mental health is a constant struggle. Um, I have more than just this, but I think this is one of the main factors. Um, and especially, like this has happened to me um, on my full on creative uh, sphere before, where I spent an entire year, 12 months, where I worked almost 10 hours a day on, on art and, and projects. And I've been suffering from it ever since. Uh, there was a day when, it, when things started to just completely get away from me and I, I just nosedived and I felt like I couldn't do anything. And I experienced uh, a microcosm of that with tennis. So what, what, what caused the nosedive? Why, why did that happen? Um, I just, I think I just did way too much, way too soon, uh, all at once and didn't, I, I neglected my other needs. I neglected, um, n n not, well, I mean, it is partially true, but that's, that's not really the right way to put it because I, I don't feel angry at myself for like the way I did things. I don't feel like I wasted my life or anything, but um, it's just, I think spiritually and um, when it comes to just my energy, I need to have a more balanced life. I need to be able to rest and um, maintain the, the novelty and, and um, keep things feeling fresh. I think the main burnout happened with tennis purely from a playing standpoint. Um, a lot of it was from the, um, the, the YouTube project and I take things really, really hard. I, I take things really much to heart. I, um, like I said in the mentality segment, I have work to do when it comes to letting people in and you know, um, seeing every single comment from every single person, that, uh, like anywhere, no matter what, no matter if they have any <clears throat> bearing on my life at all, or should, yeah. it always immediately gets in. And um, I, I think that there is a line where I think I should keep that. I think that is a part of me but there needs to be a more healthy way that I can manage it. And I, I think that once, once I can figure that out, that will, well, that'll make a huge difference with burning out. Um, because I think that also was partially why I burned out with art was when I saw how much the rose colored lenses were just completely false. They were giving me a completely false um, view of the way things would actually be. And, and I was right, but it's not bad. You mean from a success standpoint or from a, uh, uh, just a self-emotional, like how difficult it was Both. standpoint? Both, um, okay. but mainly um, I realized it, when, when it started to really hurt was when I was thinking about it from the success standpoint, where it's like no matter what you do, like something's always, like there, there, it's the Hydra, it felt like the Hydra. Uh -huh. Whereas like the, the, the more I um, looked into things and saw what the world was like, uh, especially related to what I wanted to do with my life, the more I realized that there would be, be more and more things that would pop up that made things difficult or um, just weren't all peachy. Yeah. But um, that has improved a lot um, on the creative sphere where I now have a fairly successful web series that I'm creating and a lot of nightmares have come to pass and I'm still here and now I know how to, now I know how to do things and it's, it's given me more motivation to, um, especially because in, in some ways the specific project that I'm doing um, didn't have any tools that I could use from people who have done similar things so that I could like have mentors or things telling me what to avoid. Now I can do that for other people. So that's a, that's a huge motivating factor. So like whenever things happen, um, you know, you can experience bad events. So what are you gonna do now? It's tough. It's tough to put into words because th th this is all this is all difficult stuff, and which is why I'm struggling with it so much. Which is why so many of us struggle with it so much. But it's definitely worth it. And this is something that I, I'm also learning how to to actually talk about it because I think five years ago I wouldn't be able to say as much as I'm saying, and I I'm still working through so much of this myself that I that I don't always know what to say or or how I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. But um, and and burnout I think is we don't have it figured out really. I mean we're trying to. And, and because we're so 
un, uh, we have so many different ideas flying around at once, it, it makes it a bit tougher to zero in on what is actually going to work for each individual person, what's going to work for me. I have to be ready for that. <laughs> and um, talking about on the tennis court or also life? Yeah, yes, <laughs> yes. I think more often I want to start doing this. <laughs> nice. <laughs> traditional warm up? <laughs> Not traditional, but. <laughs> you should definitely do that for a match sometime. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs>。And it really struck me that he said thank you to the ball kids. Every time they tossed him a ball, he said thank you. Yeah, he really seems like that guy. I want to go to one of those uh, Invesco uh, like champions yeah. events. Yeah, yeah, that'd be great. Those seem really cool. Where'd you see him? Uh, that was in DC at the, the DC tournament. Used to be called the Leg Mason. Uh, I remember what it's called now. City Open. City Open, yeah. All right, I'd like you to please hit three in a row first serves from the deuce side. Okay. So kind of all serves where you'd be trying to basically outright win the point, at the very least get, get control of the point. Okay, and now three in a row second serves, please, from the same spot. All right. Where it's like an important point and you gotta make sure to put it in. I'm already putting myself behind by doing that. Back yourself. Okay, over to the ad side and we'll do three first serves first. Right. Let's start with the classic. <laughs> that would have been nice if I could have hit it first try, but that's okay. Let's try again. Okay. And three second serves, please. I love the Trinities, especially for kick serves. Keep yourself going forward. Forward. Keep your eye up there. Don't look down too early. Okay, grab a quick drink, please. All right. And then uh, we're gonna play some points. Points, 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 points. I hope you all enjoyed part one of my experience at Essential Tennis with Ian. I wanted to make that a longer episode where I could put a lot of the expository stuff together, both in terms of the talking points with Ian and with the hitting, because everything you've been seeing so far has been Ian evaluating my game and my strokes. And even the point play that's coming up will also be an evaluation, so don't expect that Ian is going to be going full power on me. He's going to be holding back and playing a very specific way to try and evaluate my game and see 
see how I respond and see how my game responds. So I hope that's something that you can look forward to, and I know I'm looking forward to finally being able to look at that footage for the first time, because to this point, everything you've just seen is the only footage that I was working with so far, because I wanted to be able to focus on it in order, and this video was a bit of a doozy to work on. It was my first time working with three different camera angles at once, as well as a multi-channel microphone audio you know, that he gave me. That was a lot of amazing stuff to be able to use, and I wanted to make a fairly high production video out of it, and so it was a bit time-consuming, especially because I wasn't used to it, and I'm the only person working on it, yada yada yada. I'm not trying to complain or make excuses, especially because nobody is complaining, and if they do, I really probably shouldn't care, but I also really want people to be happy, so that's that coming out, but also, yeah, uh, whatever, that's not the point. The point is, points are on the way at some point, but I don't know when that point is, because there is also a video that I was supposed to be working on for the last five months, and Z has been waiting for it to be made for five months, so I should probably work on that, and I am making it a goal for me to get that video out before part two of the Essential Tennis stuff. So, I am trying to be optimistic that I'm gonna be able to pull myself together and make that video, and hopefully that will be entertaining for you as well, and you won't have to wait another five months to see the next part of the Essential Tennis stuff. And I have a rather large backlog in general of things that I've been wanting to put out for the channel for a long time, for at least five months, and it's not been out yet, so we'll see what happens, but I am not intending to force you to wait months for the next video, so hopefully my word will mean something there. I really hope so. Those of you who were privy to this, you already had to wait a month for this episode, and hopefully it didn't let you down. In any case, I'm really happy that I was able to put this together. I'm so grateful once again to Ian for inviting me out there and working with me and turning on his cameras, using all of his equipment so that, I, so that I could benefit from it. That's unbelievable. I was not expecting that at all. And it made the video that you just saw and the videos that you will see in the future on this experience possible. Thank you so much, Ian. Goodness gracious, he pampered that ever-loving crap out of me. So, more to come, not just with the point play, but with the more in-depth work we did after that, and plenty more talking stuff to come as well. So if you enjoyed that, that's good, because there's more of that coming. If not, then... Good thing YouTube videos allow you to skip anywhere you want, I guess. Or you could go one better and do something else entirely and stop watching. Which makes me wonder why you're still watching this. Why are you still watching this? Why are you doing this to yourself? Go have a life. Thank you so much for supporting me. I appreciate you all so much. I really hope you enjoyed. Thank you. All the best, everybody. Till next time, dream on, friends. Peace.